All right, so today uh, on our lecture, what we're going to do is uh, we ended with uh, a site last time that uh, we had started to set up, uh, and we set it up the second time because uh, the first week that we were here, we completed our site, we came back to the lab, and then when we, uh, when we start, everything gets erased <coughs> because these computers have deep freeze. But at the end of the second day, what we did was we saved our, our work as a, as a file and uh, as an archive, and what we're going to learn right now is how to resurrect our site um, based on that archive. So if you managed to print out the handouts, you'll want to look at handout number five. I'm not five, but four. And that's what I'm going to go by. Remember, the handouts are on the syllabus. So we're going to look at our sheet number uh, four about resurrecting our site. And during the, the break, you can uh, print it out if you'd like. Uh, print out the handouts, but I think most of you have already done so. And I'm going to load up those notes here just so that I have them handy as we accomplish the next steps. Now the great thing about having the notes up online somewhere is that you should be able to access them uh, any 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 day any time. But the bad thing is that if the site is is down, well, you can't get the notes. And it seems that at the moment I'm trying to access the site and it's not loading up. So um, maybe I need to find a more reliable location to hold these at. But anyway, that usually works. Um, so here's what we need to do. Uh, we have, I, you have perhaps the version of the site that you left home with, and that's what you can use. If you don't have your own version, you can use my version. Uh, so I'm going to go forward as if you're going to use my version, but if you're going to use your file, your site, it's just about the same. But here's what we need to do first. We need to set up, uh, we need to set up WAMP server like we've done before, create a database, and then we're going to resurrect our site. So on the desktop again, you're going to uh, double click on the, on the WAMP server icon, just like we've been doing, the WAMP server. <coughs> Once you double click that, go to your web browser. Go to your web browser and we'll go to localhost. So again, this should be a little bit of a recap. We've already done this. This will be the third time. But go to localhost. We're going to create the database. So when we're in localhost, you can click on PHP my admin under the tools at the bottom left. And then in the database screen, we're going to create the database and we'll call it WordPress. Type WordPress and click Create. All right, so none of this should be new. We've done it several times already. So we've got a database. Now what we need to do is put the site that we ended up with last time. And as I said, if you've got your own site, you can use it. But uh, most of us, probably I would say we, can, we should use my site. And my site is found on the network folder, so let's do this. Uh, you want to go to the computer window. Um, what do you mean by our site? Yeah, our Remember at the end of last time we used duplicator and you saved your site onto a folder. Did yes. you take that folder with you? Yeah. That's your site. Oh, okay, so just 
I'm about to show. I'm about to show here. So I'm going to do this with my site, but then you can figure out how on your site. Same steps. So uh, with my site, you're going to go to computer window, <coughs> and then you're going to open the classroom data drive Z, the network folder. network folder and then you're going to scroll down and find a folder called campus wordpress one and what you want to do is drag that folder get a copy of it and drag it to your desktop so in my folder in the network folder you're going to find my folder and drag it to your desktop so you get a copy of it What's inside of that folder, so you can close your network folder once you've copied my site. Inside of, the net, inside of that folder that you just copied is what we ended up with last week. It had the installer.php file and a zip file that includes everything that is your site. All your pictures, text, settings, the database, everything. So we're going to use this installer in a moment to uncompress this so that it's a live site again. <coughs> now uh, we're going to, once you've copied it to the desktop, uh, we're going to rename that just simply WordPress, lowercase, one word. We can keep the name as is, but it's not a good idea to have the names of folders and things uh, with spaces, especially when you're dealing with a, with a website. Sometimes web browsers get confused if your address has spaces. So mine had spaces. It had campus space WordPress space one. So I changed it just to say WordPress. So if you get that wording, that's just going to be used in all sorts of words. What? What? It, uh, you're you're just renaming the folder, right? Not the files in the folder. Right. Yeah. So you should. What, what folder is your name? Okay. My you folder. The you nope. My folder. The one that, if you've copied my project, you're co you're changing the name of the folder just to WordPress. And if I don't have a folder, I just copy my two files. You don't want to copy the two files. They need to be in a folder. They need to be in a folder. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my two files, my whole site, is inside of the folder WordPress. And now I need to get that folder, the WordPress folder, into my www folder. That's where, that's where WAMP will see it as a real site. So I need to open another window for a computer and open the local disk, drive C, And then inside the WAMP folder, open up WAMP folder. Open up www folder. The WAMP folder. So then inside of the www folder, you're going to put your WordPress uh, site into the www folder. All right, so does everyone have their WordPress folder in the WW folder? Anyone need some help? Just one moment, I saw a hand.
All right, so uh, we've got the WordPress folder in the uh, www folder. So we'll go back to our web browser. We'll go back to our web browser and then we'll go to uh, localhost slash WordPress. That's the name of the site of the folder we just put in there for it's a site slash installer dot PHP. Remember there's inside of the WordPress folder that I gave you there's two files, an installer.php file and a zip file with a huge name. So uh, we need to access that installer file inside of the WordPress folder. Press enter. So you should see this screen, duplicator installer. Raise your hand if you don't see the screen.
We're about, we're about to do it together. Um, Now, I have not gone past the screen yet, so don't try to go past the screen yet. I need to show you what the screen shows here. should be on this screen now. Uh, if we're seeing this, that means that we've loaded the installer.php file. That's what's in the folder. As I said, there's a zip file in there. I never said anything about unzipping it. Also, look at my instructions. You're, I wrote it all down for a reason. So, um, our whole site is found in that zip file, and this installer will, will, will unzip it for us. But that's what this screen here is. Since most of us are using our, most of you are using my site, I need to tell you what name I used and what password I used. Doesn't that make sense? 
So if you're going to be using your site, then it's going to be your username and your password. But since it's my site, here's how we fill this in. So um, the default action, create new database, that's fine. Uh, host is local host, that's fine. Name, new or existing database name. We just created the database in PHP My Admin. What was it called again? WordPress. WordPress. The name of the database. User, valid database name, uh, valid database user password. So uh, when we set this up, uh, my note said that the user is root and the password is actually empty. There's no password on PHP My Admin. So to see, did this work, click Test Connection right here. Success. Which one says fail? Database found fail? That means you didn't create your database. So I'll check, I'll help you out in just a moment. If you if you get one of these as fail, I'll help you in a moment, but let me proceed. Who who got two successes? Alright, so let me proceed for a moment and I'll catch you guys up in a in a bit. So this is saying here that it did find my proper name and database and such. That's what the test connection is for. So at the bottom, then there's a notice here that says disclaimer, the plugin requires uh, average technical knowledge. Please use it at your own risk, etc., etc. What this is going to do is it's going to sort of thaw. It's going to unfreeze your site that we had frozen last week. This is good. But this could also be very powerful. Think about this. Let's say you've got your site already set up, and a month later you accidentally come back to the screen again and rerun this resurrection. It'll erase everything that you've done within that month because it's going to take you back to this point. So that's why it's telling you, you should know what you're doing here, and that's why it asks you to make sure you've read that the warnings and agree to them. So turn on, I have read all warnings and notices, and then run deployment. It's going to confirm one more time. This is the server we're connecting to and the database. Be sure all database parameters are correct. And I'll click OK. Let that process for a moment and then we'll go from there. This has to do with it doesn't understand your 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 database. That means you didn't create the database or name the, the name that we had chosen. But yes, so let's go to uh, local host again.
process. Okay. Well, this is just saying that what's going to happen is it's going to recreate your site to <coughs> So if you continue to use your site for a month and you come back to this installer, it will revert to you back to this point. So you're losing work at the beginning of that month. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, anyone else? This is the screen that we're currently on. Um, so what this is saying is it's seeing the old settings and the new settings. Now, I like this plugin a lot, and it's technical. Everything we're doing is technical. You probably came in here and thought right away, I'm going to use WordPress. Yes, but there's a lot of technical things that we need to do because unless you're buying your space on GoDaddy or Bluehost, you have to manage all of this. I'm not going to ask you to spend 60 to $70 just to get your own .com. So we're doing it the free way, but it's the hard way. So once you do it the hard way uh, and you kind of know what you're doing, uh, it'll make more sense once you do it the easier way. So I use this plugin to, to archive a site, to make an exact copy of a site for a client, let's say, and then I copy it onto my WAMP on my laptop and work on it. And once it's fully set up, I make the duplicator archive again and then take it back to the server. That way I'm working with a copy of the original site. If I break something, if I update to if I update my plugins and something breaks, I'm not breaking it on the real live site. I'm breaking it on a copy of my site where there isn't much of a harm there. So this plugin uh, would be saying, if I was going from one server to another, it would be saying going from victorsbakery.com to victorstestingserver.com. That's what this screen is just telling you. You're going from one location to another. And if you want, this can be changed. I would not change anything here, uh, but you can create an administrator account and other advanced options. I always leave this alone, even for myself that I, that I know what I'm doing with this. I never change this screen. Uh, I don't recommend you change it. So just select Run Update. We have then a screen here. Uh, hopefully you don't get any errors. I have green here, no errors or warnings. And then there's four steps here. Install reports, save permalinks, test site, file cleanup. File cleanup is one of the important ones we want to do eventually because this is what I'm saying, that right now our site is ready to go. And if we work on it, and then um, we've changed the site, and if we get back to the same installer.php file, we could run that installer again, and it would erase everything that we've done because the files are still there. So this screen reminds us, remove these old files so that you don't accidentally delete your site. We'll do that one in a moment. Um, but going down the list, there doesn't seem to be any errors, and if you want, you can click on Install Report, and it'll just give you some details. None of us really need to know this, but um, that was the report. Then we've got, we, we're going to do number two, Save Permalinks. I haven't quite talked about permalinks yet, but uh, just follow along for the moment. You want to click the number two, Save Permalinks. This will ask you to log into the site. Now, if you're using my site, I'll tell you what my username and password is. If you're using your site, it's your username and password. I don't know what it is. My username is admin, and my password is happy cat. I'm going to write it here just so you can see it. Happy cat. No space. It's lowercase. But the admin is, uh, the username is admin. The password is happy cat. Is this option two? 
It is number two, save permalinks. Log in, and it should tell you at the top right, howdy admin, and you're on my site, Victor's Bakery. If you did it on your site, it should say your site. If you are using my site, that's fine. You're just going to learn what you need to do and then apply it to your own site. So clicking number two takes me to the screen permalinks, which is by default WordPress web URLs or addresses, which have question marks and lots of numbers in them. However, WordPress offers you the ability to create a custom URL structure for your permalinks and archives. This can improve the aesthetics, usability, and forward compatibility of your links, etc. What does that mean? Um, it means this. Just watch this a moment. If I go over to look at my main site and I look at this, remember we made a blog post previously, Mutual of Vista location. The address to that is WordPress slash question P equals five. Um, if I look at my um, history page, it's page ID equals 11. They have the name of the, of the address of every link as a number. You hardly see that on websites, don't you? You, you might see something like um, about or maybe .html. You see actual human readable words oftentimes on a web address, not a number. WordPress by default is going to put a number here because everything that's, that we create in WordPress is basically a number from one to a million. Everything, a picture, a page, a post, a product, everything's a number. But most modern websites, like if you go to Amazon, it's going to have Amazon.com slash products slash electronics slash um, RAM slash 25 gigabytes, right? Everything is going to be spelled out human readable, and that's what we want on our website. We want it to be nice and human readable. That's what the screen is telling us here, permalinks. The default is the numbers, but a better scheme is the one listed here, post name. That will give us the address that looks like this, like the name of the post. If I call something contact us, it will be the name of your site slash contact us, not the name of your site question mark p equals 99. So permalinks in WordPress very important. The default, I don't know why they, they don't do it post name anymore, but the default is the number. And so in all of my sites and my client sites, I turn on post name. However, in this class, we have to keep the default because I've just seen some quirks that happen when using WAMP server for testing. Um, I don't know, it gets confused. If you try to put post name and try to use your site, you'll see broken link. So make notes that while we're using WAMP server, keep it on default. But once we actually take it live onto the internet, victorsbakery.com, we will use, and I recommend, post name. But for the purposes of our class, we need to keep it as default. You know, I haven't tested it enough to make sure. I usually keep it on default anyway. But if you're using MAMP on the Mac, you, you might want to check and let, and let me know. Question? So once you switch, you go live and you switch it to post name, does it automatically it does exactly that's the great thing about WordPress it, it's all you can make a bunch of changes and they happen instantaneously so yes once you put it online to your own dot com and change it to post name and then save it will go through everything on your whole site and give it a proper pretty name we're gonna keep it on default and click save changes we didn't change anything but we want to confirm it so click save changes Um, so did you notice in our web browser we've got two tabs. The duplicator plugin is still open up here, and it opened the new tab for permalink. So close that tab just so that we go back to the WordPress duplicator screen. Back 
here. So we did number two. We saved the permalinks. Number three, the, I, I feel they should put number three as number four. They should put number four as number three. Because right here, this is test your site, meaning go to every page and make sure it works. In my experience, this has worked 99% of the time. Uh, so we'll skip number three. We'll go to number four. Remove the installation files. Remove that installer.php file and remove anything else that was made <coughs> during the duplicator uh, steps. So let's click File Cleanup. It's going to confirm delete all insta installer files. Click OK. And that should jump me back to my WordPress installation and it'll tell me, OK, we cleaned up these files. There's the installer file, there's the archive file, and these are some files that were made during the resurrection. So now they're <coughs> removed. Now we cannot accidentally revert our site back to this point. We can close the duplicator tab now. We'll stay in the WordPress tab. And just to remind ourselves, uh, we can go to visit, go to uh, put your name on the name on your site and visit site, just so that we can see the front end. So here's our site so far. We have the home. Up on the top right, the nav bar, the home screen, a history screen. Remember, we did this last time. We've got contact, visit Facebook, etc. All right. So, did everyone get um, get to this point? Does everyone have their site ready to go? So this, this that we've spent this time on goes back to what I've said on previous classes, and it bears repeating that, basically, are you sure you want to be your own entrepreneur? Are you sure you want to sell your own products? You can do this all through PayPal, eBay, Etsy, Amazon. You can sell products through a pre-established infrastructure. That's what they're there for. Amazon, eBay makes it a lot easier for you to sell your products through them because they're going to run the server. They're going to update the database. They're going to update the um, shipping um, infrastructure. That's why you're paying them, I don't know what it is, the 30% or whatever. Whatever these companies charge you to run uh, your site through them because they deal with all of this stuff. Now, what the way we're doing, honestly, is the hardest way in that, well, we're going to use WordPress, and WordPress is really cool and easy to use, but notice all the steps we've had to do just to get back into WordPress. And we also have the limitation that in this room we have to do this because everything erases. Your site is not ready to go from last week. Everything erased. So I have to deal with these limitations when I teach these classes. Uh, and this is the hardest way to do it all. This is what I do for clients, and you probably will never have to really do this after you learn it. Because at the end of the class, I'm going to talk about, let's talk about getting GoDaddy. Once you have GoDaddy, one-click button to turn on WordPress, and then you just log in. You don't have to create the database. You don't have to resurrect the site like this from week to week. You just use it. But I can't ask you to pay $70 for that to learn this. So we're doing it the hard way with WAMP, with MAMP. Once we learn this stuff, and finally we're in WordPress, we can get back to the business of using WordPress. That's why I wrote everything down on handouts, and I'm going to, uh, the, the server's down, so I'm going to try to put the handouts in the network folder during the break. That way you can still get them, even though the other location is down. Uh, so I wrote it all down. I went through it all step by step. I tested it myself. I wrote it all down, and hopefully they're useful to you, those instructions. But uh, any questions so far? Yes? I tried to go back and do it again. You have a special case, so during the break, call me over and we'll, we'll see what's going on. Um, so we'll do a couple of, uh, of things and then we'll, we'll take a break just to, uh, just to accomplish something here. 
Uh, remember when we set up WordPress, the default is that it is more of a blog format than a, than a classic website format, in that the front page will always show the latest blog post. Well, what I want to show there instead is a, is a welcome message or a picture or something. And if someone wants to read the blog, I want to have a link on top here that says blog. So I want to change that. It needs a little bit of setup first. So if you're, if you're on the visit site screen, let's go back up here and go back to dashboard. Back to the dashboard. And here, here's how this needs to work. Uh, we need to create two pages. Remember, we've talked about posts and pages. We need to create two pages. One page will be the home page, and one page will be the blog page. So over here under pages, um, let's select add new, add new pages. The name of the page here we'll call home. And we'll just write welcome to our shop. So we don't need anything special on this page, just uh, the name of a page. And notice right away here it shows, here's your permalink. There's your link, the name of my site slash page ID 19. We've got to change permalinks here, but it doesn't do much, so don't worry about it. Not until we have that other permalink screen set. But uh, we wrote the name of the page, we wrote a little text, a little content, let's publish. So on the top right, select Publish. <coughs> so we've got a, a placeholder, a screen for our home page. Okay, we need one more. So we've got an Add New button right there. We need another page now, and we'll call that uh, Blog. So select Add New. And on this new page, we will call this blog. We'll just write, Welcome to the blog. and then publish. Once I've done that, let's go back to all pages here. And it should show you our pages. So we need two pages as placeholders, and then on the next step, we'll set it up. Okay, 
we'll have to wait for the next minute to figure out what's going on. Very nice. All right, so we've got uh, two pages, a home, and a blog. And what I need to do then is make a setting change um, to say use the home page as the home page and use the blog page as the blog page, the blog section. Because the default is that every new blog post goes to the home page. I don't want that. Uh, so let's go over to our settings. If you hover over settings and then select reading, let's go to reading under settings. And this is what we looked at previously that we hadn't had a chance to, ch to change yet. Front page displays. It should be what does the front page display? Uh, at the moment, your latest post. So every new blog post automatically gets put to the home page, and the newer one pushes down the older one. I want my home page to instead be a static page. So if you turn on static page and it says, what will display on the front page? Well, the home page. And where will your posts, where will your blog posts reside? In my blog page. So uh, remember then when you make that change to select Save Changes. And then we'll have to edit our menu. Our menu currently has, I think, just a home, uh, history and contact or something. It needs to have also the blog link. The menu does not automatically get the, the, the links until we edit it. So here under Appearance, we have Menus. Let's go to Appearance Menus. Our menu is currently set up like this. It's home, history, contact, visit Facebook. And notice it does not have the blog link. It's listed here, so you want to select blog, add to menu, and then rearrange it however you want. Maybe you want blog between history and contact. So let's just drag and drop. So you need to select which page is missing from the menu and then Add to menu. And then you can drag it. Now remember, be careful that if you're dragging and it becomes indented, that means it'll be a sub-menu item. You want it to be on the same level like that. So if you indent it, now it's going to be a sub-menu item. Could you show me again how you drag the page? How you drag the page. You click it and you drag it. So then when you make that change, you want to click Save Menu so that the Changes take effect. And if you go back to visit site, you should see now the home page shows Welcome to Our Shop. And now the menu on top here shows the blog. So obviously our homepage is still very basic. They have more work to do on it. But uh, here I've shown you about changing the default behavior of WordPress so that you have a static homepage. 
the blog will not automatically show up on the home page. You might not want that. You might want a section for blog, and that's what we did. If I go to blog, it shows my blog posts, my blog content. Click home and it goes back to the home page. Uh, we'll take a break in a moment, and when we come back, we'll talk about uh, various other things we need to fix up, such as I don't want people to write a comment on the home page. I don't want people to be mean and write some graffiti there right on my home page. So we'll talk about uh, enabling or disabling comments and other features of WordPress. But at this point, we've done a lot about of work about bringing back our site, working on our site a little bit. Uh, let's take a break. Let's do 15 minutes. So I need to set up a few things here, and then when we get back, we'll we'll keep going. So we'll be back at 10:35. Uh, I'm going to put the notes, the handouts in the network folder in a moment. And if you needed any help, call me over, and I'll and we'll get you up and running.